All right, grace, peace, and love. Grace, peace, and love to the saints who are watching this video and you see the title, um, The Day of the Lord. Let's get straight into it. <clears throat> so we're talking about 2 Peter 3, right? And he talked about a lot in this chapter. So I advise you to go read it because it says a lot. But this is what we're going to focus on, right? gonna start at verse 10 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up verse 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasty unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, I want to touch on a few things that he just mentioned here. First off, I'm going to touch on this. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. What does he mean? Well, we see right here a reference. First Thessalonians chapter 5, right? This speaks on the day of the Lord. Verse 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. See, they're saying the same thing. But Paul is going to expound on it a little bit more. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. So travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So he's comparing it just like uh, when a woman is in uh, about to have a uh, baby. You know, it's very painful and stressful. It's a painful time for a woman during that time. And they shall not escape verse 4 but ye brother are not in darkness so wait a minute he's comparing darkness to the night right check this out that the day should overtake you as a thief ye are all children of the light and the children of the day take that out now he's saying light day dark and night now that goes all the way back to Genesis 1 when the Lord made um, the light and he called the day light and he called the uh, night dark. Well, he called the dark night and the day light. That's in Genesis chapter 1. We are not of the night nor in darkness. Check that out. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Meaning we're not, we're not walking in wickedness. Right? We are not walking in wickedness. But uh, that's one thing I wanted to touch on. And then I want to focus on something else that Peter said. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. Now, he said the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Then he said these things shall be dissolved. Now, Paul also expounded on this too. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Check this out. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now, what is Peter and Paul trying to say here? They're saying that the earth shall melt with fervent heat. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. What do they mean by this? Right? He said this earthly house. What does he mean by this? Let's keep going. For in this we groan earnestly, desire to be clothed upon our house, which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. 
For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up. Now check that out. What is Paul saying here? He's saying, Peter said, in this context, these things will be shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also with the works therein. Wait a minute now. And Paul said, we know of this earthly house. So then he said mortality might be swallowed up. But he already expounded on this early in his, in his uh in Corinthians. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter 15. Right? That's why precept must be upon precept according to the scripture. Let's go to first Corinthians 15. I want to go to first. I started 44. 44. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised in a spiritual body. There's a natural body. There's a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That first, that was not first, which is spiritual. But that which is natural after that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. So when he says the, the tabernacle in 2 Corinthians 5, he's talking about your mortal body. The second man is the Lord from here and from heaven. Right? Because we just seen that he said there's a natural body, but then there's a spiritual body. So your earthly tabernacle, which is the first Adam, will be your earthly body. And that's going to be dissolved, like Peter said, in the day of the Lord. It shall melt with fervent heat. Right? Let's keep going. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So this has all to do with flesh and spirit. How do I know this? Right? Peter mentioned this again in 2 Peter, right? Chapter 1. Watch this. Verse 13. Yeah, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. So he's talking about, look at this. Moreover, I will endeavor, endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. So he's talking about his earthly body is about to die. Now, if you go check out um, my other video. I don't know if I've uploaded it this time, but I just did a recent video where it's talking about death and sleep. But anyways, we're going to stay on topic, right? Now, we see that our earthly house, this tabernacle, right? This body, this mortal body. Let's just stay. Let, let me go back to 1 Corinthians 15 and slow it down for you a little bit to make it make sense. Watch this. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip down to verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So we, we bear the image of this earthly body, but we're going to also bear the uh, image of a spiritual body. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption here in corruption. So your fleshly, mortal, wicked body um, that's subject to say, uh, sin is not going to inherit in corruption. Right? That's why I say a walk in the spirit. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. This is what I was talking about a while ago. Meaning, we shall not all die. Right? Fleshly. Because we are uh, we already dead in Christ. When we changed our mind, Right? And he brought grace and faith. But we haven't got our spiritual glorified. It hasn't been revealed. Nobody can see it yet. Right? But let's keep going. I want to stay here. I'm going too deep. 
I want to stay here. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So that's what's going to happen in the day of the Lord. Right? And what do they mean? Something else I want to touch on. Right? Let's see. What else did he say? The earth. Also, in the works that are in that, of course, that's talking about the flesh in this present world shall be burned up. It's going to be dissolved, like he just said. It's going to be dissolved. Looking for and hasting for the coming of the day of God. So, and then when it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, that's talking about what? This mortal must put on immortality. The earthly body will be changed into a spiritual body in the day of God. Now, touching the, elef uh, the elements. Right? I can go deep into this. But uh, watch this. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 3. Even so, we... When we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of this world. How? If you keep reading this chapter. Verse 13. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh. So that's the elements of this world. But yeah, I just wanted to touch a little bit on the day of the Lord. And a little bit of how it's going to look. Right? And I might, I'm definitely going to make a part two. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.